We really need your help to get the word out there. Stuart Anderson and his son Cedar had been your garden variety beekeepers for years, harvesting honey the traditional way. You had to protect yourself from stings, fire up a smoker to sedate the bees, crack the hive open, lift heavy boxes, pull out the frames trying not to squash bees, brush them off the combs or use a leaf blower, transport the frames to a processing shed, cut the wax capping off, filter the honey and clean up all the mess, then the frames have to go back to the hives again. That changed back in the mid-2000s when the pair decided there had to be a better and easier way. Cedar Anderson talked to me via Skype from his home in Australia. It was just so much work to get your honey in such a disturbance for the bees. I'd spend all weekend just to get a few buckets of honey to sell to the shop and make a big mess in the process and my bees were were quite cranky about it and I thought there had to be a better way. That led us on what turned out to be a decade-long invention journey of tinkering away, trying prototypes and putting them in the hive, sometimes waiting three months to see whether the bees liked it or not. Eventually, they settled on a design that would become the Flow Hive. And in there is partially drawn honeycomb cells, which the bees wax up, complete the cells, and then start filling them with nectar and do that process of, of making the honey. When the bees are finished and the combs are full of honey, you put a lever into the top of the flow hive, give it a turn, which opens up honeycomb cells, and out comes the honey. When they were ready to go in early 2015, the Andersons turned to a crowdfunding website with the goal of raising $70,000. Instead, they raised more than $12 million. Now, a little more than four years later, the Andersons say there are more than 65,000 flow hives in more than 130 countries. Two of those hives are perched above a canyon in Mission Hills. So yeah, completely empty of honey right now. They belong to Eric Karpinski. The flow hive is great because it's made it accessible to so many more hobbyists, which then allows that genetic diversity. Genetic diversity is critical to strong bee colonies. It makes them much more able to fight off viruses and to withstand destruction brought by the use of insecticides. Plus, Cedar Anderson says the process of beekeeping is good for humans, too. People who just start beekeeping tend to open their eyes to what's going on with the flowers, what's going on with the sprays, what's going on with habitat and the very matrix of life that we all depend on. Bees are responsible for 30% of pollination across the globe. If they go, so do fruits and vegetables. And you can just see how beautiful it is. Aside from the delicious honey he harvests a couple of times a year, Eric Karpinski says it feels great to be doing his part to combat colony collapse. I love that we just have all these little pockets of reserves all across the U.S., all across the world, because we can't, we don't know exactly what causes colony collapse. If all of a sudden there's a huge colony collapse set in a bunch of commercial beekeepers, they can, we could put out the word, hey, we need queens, we need, we need some hives. Even with a flow hive, you still have to tend to your bees, which means you need a bee suit and a smoker. It may not be traditional beekeeping, but it is an effort. However, you could call it a labor of love. When all the beekeeping work is done, the beekeeper garb comes off, so do the lids, and that's when it's time to taste mm, sweet success. John Carroll, KPBS News.